for the potency of your word, the efficacy of your word. We thank you for the power encased in your word. The Bible says you sent forth your word. Your word heals them. And your word delivers them from their destruction. And Lord Father, as you sent forth your word, which is a two-edged sword, we ask, oh God, that your word will penetrate, oh God, into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord, your word will do wonders in our lives in Jesus' name. I submit my total being, soul, spirit, and body to the authority of your word. I crumble at your feet, oh God. I enthrone you here today. Lord, let it not be me, oh God. Cause my tongue to be like a pen of a ready writer. The Lord, you will help me to deliver your word accurately, with precision, in the name of the Lord Jesus. That I will not miss a, a letter of what you want to deliver to your children today. Have your way, oh God. I take authority over every strange spirit. I take authority over every spirit of distraction. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I plead your blood in this atmosphere. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Holy Ghost, have your way. Take control. Glorify your name. Thank you, Father. Is there anybody troubled or worried? I remove every trouble by the Spirit of the Lord. I remove every worry by the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak peace to trouble heart. Anybody here, you are troubled in your heart. I speak peace. I decree peace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I usually say that whatever you have achieved in life is no longer your potential. Whatever you have achieved in life is no longer your potential. It only says that there is something better you can do. There is something greater you can do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so whatever level you are right now, the Bible said that the glory of the latter house shall surely surpass the former. I pray that new grace for a new glory will rest upon you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Everything that has kept you on the spot for so long, I break the chakras today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I command your feet to gather speed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I don't know who the Lord is sending me to today. You will no longer be delayed. I don't know who that individual is who is here listening to this message, maybe at home, maybe he's here. You will no longer be delayed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Share with us of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ as he was born. There was something that was very significant about his birth that the Bible, you know, did not fail to record. That there were some wise men who saw the star of Jesus Christ. Even before Jesus Christ knew himself, he was innocent. He didn't know anything at all. But there were forces that knew what he did not know. They said, we have seen a star in the sky. There's something significant about the birth of Jesus. And I want to submit to you that for every child of destiny, there's something significant about you. There's something that forces know about you that you are oblivious of. And that is the truth of it. That is the truth. That is the truth. Some were excited about the star of Jesus, but some were intimidated by the star of Jesus. Even though as little as he was, as innocent as he was, as harmless as he was, as guiltless as he was, there were people that were intimidated by his star. And they rose up against the star of Jesus. Today I pray, every force that rises up against your star, they are crumbled today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I know every ministration, I'm always sent to one person. And so whosoever, whosoever that person is, others will help you say better amen. I say every force that has risen against your star, heaven will rise against such force in the mighty name of Jesus. They rose up against your star. 
Many of us will face, I, I share with us here, I say, for every God-given vision, there's going to be demonic contention. There's no vision that will not be attended by contention. If there's anything that the enemy is intimidated about over your life, it's because of your destiny. If you can let go of your destiny, the enemies will leave you alone. If you can say, well, I'm not doing anymore. I'm not, I'm going to, I, I refuse to evolve into all that God has called me onto. The enemies will let you go. The reason for battles in the life of man is nothing but because of the plan and the program of God over his life. If you can say, God, I disagree with your program over my life. I no longer want to allow what you have said over me to come to pass. The enemy will release, will release you. Suddenly, you just discover you are always having sweet dreams. <laughs> Everything will be on the table for you. But the enemies are contending against the star of every king. There is a king in you and as i wrap up the message last week i told us that the prophecy that preceded your birth it was enough and is enough to sustain you man can kill all the forces of the aid of darkness can kill anybody but nobody can ever kill a prophetic seed nobody said my word will not return back to me void you are a word spoken into time Am I speaking to somebody here this morning? I said, you are not just you are not just somebody. You are a word spoken into time. You are a product of the prophetic. You are released into such a time as this. And no force can kill you. I said, no force can kill you? I've seen many children of God who are afraid of threats of death. Either in a dream or one diabolical person threatening them saying, I will kill you. Nobody can kill a prophetic seed. Nobody. My word will not return back unto me void until it has accomplished the purpose for which I have sent it. It's not just talking about the word we read here alone. It's talking about you. You are my word that I have spoken into time. I have an assignment for you. I have a purpose for you to fulfill in life. You can't return back unto me empty. You will fulfill the purpose for which I have sent you to the world. Am I speaking to somebody here this morning? The prophecy that preceded your birth is enough to sustain you. That is why you must not be intimidated by any form of intimidation from the pit of darkness. Praise the Lord. I wish we can just come to realize who we are. And then we will be able to, you know, tread the path of life victoriously without any intimidation of molestation from the pit of darkness. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 7. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 7. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto nations. Here it was a time that God was calling Jeremiah to rise up to the purpose for which he had sent him to the face of the earth. And he said, God, I am a child. I cannot speak. These people are older than me. These people are well educated than me. I'm intimidated. I don't know what to say. God told him, don't say I'm a child. You don't even know anything about who you are. You have no clue about you. That before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. So this thing that we are talking about, it has nothing to do with what you are going through right now. Before you were born at all, I knew you. Before your mother knew that he was, she was pregnant, I had already sanctified you. That is, I had already separated you. To sanctify means to separate so you are you are a class of your own there are no two people like you on the face of the earth praise the lord no two people like you on the face of the earth no two people at all you are a class of your own i sanctify you i separate you you god said i separate you for an assignment before you were born so coming to life facing life's challenges and seeing a lot of things playing out in your life god says i am in the knowing 
because all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So everything you are going through will eventually bring you to a, the place of destination that I've ordained for you. Don't allow the enemies to intimidate you. Look at what Jeremiah said in verse 6. Then said, ah, ah Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, do not say I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. I pray for somebody here, you will fulfill the volume of the book that is written of you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. God is a script writer. God is a script writer. Every one of us, the script of our life has been written out. Ever before we were born. We live to play out the scripts written out over our lives. And that is why the only person that knows the end of the story of a man is the script writer. If somebody has not written the script of your life, he can never determine your end. Am I speaking to somebody here? Nobody, they cannot determine your end. I don't care. That is why Sammy says, even my, 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 my enemies, when I fall, I will rise up again. There is a rising for somebody here in the house. I said, there is a rising for somebody here in the house. The only one that knows the end of the chapter of the book is the script writer. So when you get to the middle of that story, please don't draw conclusion yet. There are surprises that are still going, that are still waiting for you. Praise the Lord. There's what is called suspense, you know, when in, in, in writing, suspense. Just to keep those that are reading, you know, to continue to want to read. The suspense, we create suspense. And some things happen, you say, oh, maybe this is going to be the end. And suddenly in the next chapter, the story changes. I see the story in the life of somebody receiving a new turn in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I said, there is a turn around for your story in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Glory is coming out of your story. I said, glory is coming out of your story in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let no man draw conclusion over your life. Don't draw conclusion over your own life. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care how everything is being played out. God is called the Alpha and the Omega. In the first place, he had the first say in your life. Remember, he told Jeremiah, before you were formed, I knew thee. This journey began ever before anybody knew anything about you. It was just you and I in the picture. I was the Alpha at that time. And then I have gone into time to wait for you to the end of time to conclude the story of your life. Nobody can avert, nobody can subvert all that I planned for you. All things will work together for your good. If you are that person, shout a better amen. The psalmist says in Psalm 40 verse 7, Psalm 40 verse 7, then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. Can you see? Say, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. So what God has written is written. That is why the Bible says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. No one can contend against the word of God. No one can haggle the word. No one can bargain the word. It's settled. I can as well say, forever, O Lord, my life is settled in God. I say your life is settled in God. The troubled waters can never subvert the program of God over your life. Your life, your case is settled in God. I say your case is settled in God. Why? Because God is a God that declares the end from the beginning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that is why I'm glad to announce to you, you can never die before your time. Yeah. Tell your neighbor you're not going anywhere yet. Tell them, tell her you are not going anywhere yet. Oh yes, that's the truth. Even though Moses was inside a locally made basket floating on the river hopeless, there was a king in the inside of that boy. When you look at the predicament, the, the, the circumstances surrounding the bath of Moses and all the things that are attended to him at the onset, I mean, you could conclude that, oh, this one is a goner. 
But God said, there is a king in Moses no Pharaoh can kill. There is a king in you no enemy can subdue. I said there is a king in you no enemy can subdue. You may not look like it. You may not feel like it. People may not see it. Everything surrounding you may not prove it. But you are it. <laughs> I said you are it. I said you are it. <laughs> I said you are it. There is a king in the inside of you. I love the story of Gideon. I took time to study the life of that man. It's amazing how God can call something out of nothing. How God can just declare something and you wonder, is it really real? Have you received prophecies before? Have you received a word from the Lord before? You say, God, please, can you tell me something else? Can you tell me something else? Years back, when God revealed to my wife of the ministry, I said, you don't understand. I am from the village. Villagers, they, are, they live in the village. But God has a plan. I said, God has a plan. God is a God that will bring the pauper from the dunghill and he will set him among princes. That's the kind of God we serve. I had the story of Papa Debo for 18 years of his life. He never had a shoe on. 18 years. Just imagine. 18 years. No shoe on at all. Walking barefooted. See the story of that man. No man can conclude over your life. I said no man can conclude over your life. Judges chapter 6 beginning from verse 2. I'll read verse 2 and I'll jump to verse 11 and through to 14. Judges chapter 6 beginning from verse 2. I'll just key on verse 2 then I'll jump to verses 11 and 14. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel and because of the Midianites the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. Verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in offer that pertained unto Joash the Abbezrite and his son Gideon threshed with by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Why did he do that? Because he was a coward. Because he was running away from the enemies he was destined to overcome. Many of us are running away from the enemies we are destined to overthrow. <laughs> verse 12 and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him the Lord is with you thou mighty man of valor God is calling the king in the inside of somebody out today as a God is calling the king in the inside of somebody out today said the Lord is with thee thou mighty man of valor that was quite paradoxical it was paradoxical he was a coward by nature we understood that he was always it was after the enemies had led that he would quickly go and get the remnants and run back into his cave he was a coward and God looked at him and said no 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 even though you are acting like a coward there is a king in you you do not know anything about and there and then God called the king in the inside of him out and Gideon said in verse 13 oh my lord if the lord be with us why then is all this befalling us and where will where all the miracles which our father told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? He said, look at the circumstances surrounding my life. Look at how my life has turned out to become. And you are calling me mighty man of valor? That is not real. That is not realistic. Let's tell the truth here. We've heard about mighty miracles and signs and wonders and your mighty moves, you know, I miss our fathers. But when it comes to my generation, when it comes to my life, it's a different story. You are not really with us. When you go through circumstances and situations in life, it's easy to conclude that God is not real, that God is not there. Remember Job? When Job was going through trying times, the father, the wife said, if God is with you, why would you be going through clusters of defeat? If indeed God is with you, why are you sick? If indeed God is with you, why can't you pay your bills? If indeed God is with you, why do you have all these problems in your marriage? If God is with you, why are you backward? <laughs> the ways of God, they are past finding. You can't reason God out. I said you cannot reason God out. But now, the Lord has forsaken us. That's what he said. He said, by the virtue of the 
challenges I'm going through. The Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. The reason we are under oppression is because we are forsaken by God. Verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. Let the king in the inside of you rise up. I call out some, to somebody here. The king in the inside of you to rise up in Jesus name. I said the king in the inside of you. The strength in the inside of you. The grace in the inside of you. The anointing in the inside of you. The favor in the inside of you. The rivers of life in the inside of you. To come out in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So go in this damn might and thou shall have Israel, save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. So I am dead. You are destined to be an overcomer. Regardless of the attendant situation and challenges, you will save Israel forever, O oh Lord. Your word is settled in heaven. Concerning Gideon, God said, you will save Israel. You will be a winner. You will be a champion. You will be an overcomer. Regardless of the intimidations of the Midianites, you will overcome them. I speak to somebody here. Everything that stands as the Midianites over your life, you will overcome them in Jesus' name. Everything that is intimidating you, everything causing fear into your life, you will overcome them in the name of Jesus. So you will overcome them. And you know when God speaks, nobody can disannul the word of God. I mean, God, when the Bible says the word of God is yea and amen. It says you will overcome means you will overcome. And God is speaking to somebody here. You will overcome. You will overcome. You will overcome. In the name of Jesus. Even though we look, look at the story of Joseph, he was sold into the land of slavery. Even though Joseph was a servant of Potiphar, even though Joseph was in prison, there was something about Joseph. There was a king in the inside of troubled Joseph. There was a king in him. I'm glad to announce to you, your situation can never hinder your destination. <laughs> I say your situation cannot hinder your destination. I don't know who needs to hear that. Your situation can never hinder your destination. I speak to you as a prophet of the Lord. You will reach your goal. I say you will amount to much. Everything that says you will not go will go for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> there was one little boy at the back of the desert tending sheep facing all the horrors and the predicaments challenges and precarious situations of life he was a man forgotten he was a man nobody wanted to associate with you know people like to associate with success nobody wants to associate with failure I'm telling you, you you'll be surprised if you want to know true friends you know them in difficult times Am I speaking to somebody here? <laughs> Don't ever, if you have little in your hands and you see people attracted to you, it is because of what you have. Nobody wants to associate. In fact, the Bible says that even the poor, nobody wants to be his friend. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because poverty can be contagious. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Birds of a feather, they flock together. Is that not so? <laughs> you can reach out to the poor, but you don't want to discuss 10 million business with the poor man because his mind cannot comprehend it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 16, beginning from verse 10. First Samuel, are you being blessed this morning? Is God, is God speaking to you this morning? Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 16, beginning from verse 10. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. You remember what happened here? God told uh, uh, Samuel, Go to the house of Jesse and go and call out the king in the midst of his children. There's a king in the midst of his children you need to call out. And so all of them were paraded before Samuel. The big guys in the house were paraded. Those who had, you know, the wherewither were paraded. The, I mean, the big shots in the house were paraded. Those who have gone to Harvard, 
those who have gone to prison, those who have gone, I mean, to big, they, they were part of themselves. This one looks like a king, you know. Just look at his stature, look at everything about him. He's handsome, and uh, I mean, he has everything you can ever look at his credentials. I mean, you know, he has this degree here and had that degree. You see how many, oh, in fact, this will be a perfect king for Israel. But God told Samuel, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Brothers, it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by, this, by my spirit, saith the Lord. I share with us here, and I think I said that last week, that God disqualifies the qualified so that the disqualified can be qualified. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Vashti was qualified. But there was somebody that was disqualified by all standards. She was a slave. An orphan living in the house of a gate man. By all standard, he was not a palace, she was not a palace material. She wasn't a palace material at all. But because God disqualifies the qualified, so that the disqualified can be qualified, God disqualified Vashti. He said, Today there is a throne, there is a throne for Esther. You have been occupying the throne for so long. I will demote you. And I will promote her. Today, every Vashti that has occupied the position of your life, I don't know where, I don't know how. I don't know how. It could be in your place of work. It could be in business. It could be maritally in any way. Every Vashti that has occupied the position of your life, we dethrone them today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So as Samuel got the, the, the bottle of anointing oil and was going to pour that anointing oil upon Shama. The thing got frozen. The oil wasn't coming out. Ah uh ah. -uh. He said, This is the work of witchcraft here. He said, Shama, why, why is your head repelling the anointing? <laughs> he wanted to almost pour it upon that, uh, upon Shama and upon Abinadab. The oil wasn't coming out. So there's something strange here. And then Samuel asked David, sorry, asked Jesse. Are you sure these are all your children? Let's see that. Again, Jesus made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. I read 1 Samuel chapter 16, 10 and 11. 1 Samuel 16, 10 and 11. And again, Jesus made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesus, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said, verse 11 unto Jesus, Are here all your children? And he said, Um... He thinks there remains yet the youngest. Can you see? How does it, somebody said, bring all your children out. How can you have a child and you forget the child? You don't even know the child. So when they're asking you, parade all your children, I don't say, wait, I see I have one. Let that one come so that I can bring all of them before you. It was someone that was reminding Jesse, are you sure these are all the children that you have in this family? He said, I think there remains one. If I don't want, we don't even know if he's still alive or not. You know, I, I have queries when I read the scriptures. I take time to ponder and ask, ask questions. I want to know. I want to know. David, the youngest in the family. Right? He was the youngest in the family. And then, as a father, a responsible father, a sane father, you were looking for somebody that would go and tend the sheep where the lions were and the bears were and the foxes were and those white animals were. All those hefty guys that have, you know, that have built their, is it, what do they call it? Is it torso and whatever they call that have built their stuff. You did not choose any one of them. It was this little fragile boy that you said you would be the one to go. There is an issue about David. Some people said that David seems to be like a controversial child in that family. And I tend to kind of admit that. Why? Because nobody even mentioned the mother of David. Am I making sense to anybody? I'm, 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 because if the mother of David was in the picture, I'm, I, like the mother of John, remember the story of John? When the, the elders of the community and they came, they said, because the father of uh, John, Zechariah, was dumb. We will determine the future of John. The mother stood out and said, Not so. I carried the pregnancy for nine months. 
I don't care the kind of anointing that rose upon your head. I have the father say over this child. You cannot determine the future of this child. But in the case of David, the mother was not in the picture to advocate for her. And all the brothers, they could live together said, he's the one that you need to send. If he dies, he's, he's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Those who have written you off in life, they are coming back to lick the dust at your feet. I say this by prophecy. Those who have written you off in life, they are coming to lick the dust at your feet. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Then he said, There remained yet the youngest, and behold, he kept the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he comes. <laughs> I release upon your life today the anointing of send and fetch him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive it now. I said, Receive it now, mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Send and fetch him. It's an anointing. So we're all these people that were paraded. We are, we don't, we, are not, we are not choosing any one of them. That man that you gave the resume, that one that placed that uh, proposal, that's the one uh, about almost last two years ago. That's the proposal we are going to, uh, to approve. Ah, the anointing of send and fetch him. Receive it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So send and fetch him for we are not going to sit down until that underdog comes here. Wow. 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 David, the most unrecognized in the family. David, the shepherd boy. David, the youngest of his brother. David, the underdog, had in him the solution to the predicament of Israel. You don't know what you have. I'm telling you. Tell your neighbor, you have no clue about who I am. You better say it and say it as if you understand what I'm saying. You have no clue about who I am. <laughs> yeah you sit with people you don't have a clue about what God is going to bring out of them you don't have a clue you don't have a clue you don't have a clue at all share with us if anybody was to travel abroad it was not me no 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 uh, there's no English like baddest so but you know I told you about coinage right remember I told you about coinage yeah, in, in English, if you, if you know how to speak English, you can coin a new word, and before you know it, it enters into Oxford uh, Dictionary. I was the baddest in the family. I was, you know what I'm talking about. Don't tell me you don't know. I was the baddest in that family. Somebody you just see, you just he said, this one cannot do good in life. Leave it, let him, whatever, he, whatever he wants to turn himself into because you know you get to the time you, you, you just say whatever he wants to become let, just, just leave him <laughs> just with us, 17 since 17 I never went back to that home I was released at 17 whatever you want to become at 17 we have 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 born this this your your problem for 17 years whatever you want to become thereafter if you want to walk with your head you want to crawl <laughs> that's your problem just go you don't have a clue about the plan of God over, that's why you cannot write off any child regardless of the troubles in their lives and the challenges that they are going through don't write off any of your children just keep praying for them keep praying for them and I pray for all our children here the counsel of God over your life alone will stand in the name of the Lord Jesus. And every negative word that might have been released over any child, they are over anybody here. I stand as a prophet of God. I cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. I say I cancel it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We know the story of Jephthah. Jephthah was a bastard in the house. He was a bastard. That's the word. That's the word. And he was a reject. Because of that, they said, you have no portion in this family. They threw him away. He, became, he went on an exile. They exiled him. But there was something about that boy that nobody knew. The solution to the problem of that particular nation was in his hand. There was a king in, Jep in Jephthah. And the reason why many of these biblical personalities went through trying periods in their life was nothing but because of the king that was in them. As a matter of fact, it was at the end of the stories of many of them that we got to realize where God was actually driving at. 
You remember until Joseph got to the throne. It was until then we knew the plan of God. It was until then we could even interpret his dream. She said, God has sent me ahead of you to preserve life. So all the things I went through were to get me to where God is taking me to. All the things that you are going through are, the, are actually helping you to get you to where God is heading you. And I pray you will get to your destination. Amen. I say you will get to your destinations. Amen. One thing that is common about all these or all these things where they had enemies in their lives. It was common amongst all those kings that we, we read about in the scriptures. They had a lot of enemies. Those who were intimidated by their crowns. The enemy is intimidated by your crown. That is why you must stand up and take what belongs unto you. Let no man despise their, your youth. Let no man put you down. Let no man write the story of your life. It is, if they say the negative to you, reject it right there. Do not admit every negative word that any man speaks to you. That is why somebody like me, don't come around me negative. We're not going to be friends. I don't like negative people around me. I don't like negative energy. Tell me it's possible. That's what I want to hear. Tell me we can make it. That's what I want to hear. Tell me we will progress. That's what I want to hear. Tell me that this situation will not overcome us. That's what I want to hear. Don't come and murmur and complain and lament before me. We can be friends. Praise the Lord. I am a friend of those who believe in the God of impossibilities. Tell me, even though it's difficult, we understand. Even though it's challenging, we understand. But our God is able. Our God is able. I have, a, I have a son of mine, you know, that will always call me and just speak to my life. I said, wow. In fact, I call him, I call him, last, I said, you are a son of encouragement. You know, regardless of how anointed you are as a man of God, there are moments that you are down. There are moments you need somebody to just look into your face and just speak to your life. Don't you know? Some people think that pastors are super spiritual. That is not true. We are men of like passions. We go through what others go through. Am I making sense to anybody here? I didn't fall down from heaven. I was born the way you were born. I was raised the way you were raised. I, I, I ate the food you eat. <laughs> Am I making sense to anybody? That's the truth. So there are challenging moments for us also. But that brother just right on time. We just call pastor. I just call to check on you. How are you doing? I said, well, we thank God for everything. And said, pass all is well. And, and they will begin to speak prophetically all the things you are going through. You will become an overcomer. You will overcome them. God will make a way. God will send help. I mean, it will begin to just, was, amen, 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 amen. May God send your prophet your way in Jesus' name. Amen. One thing common about all the kings where there were enemies intimidated by their cross. The reason you go through challenges is nothing but your crown. The enemies are perplexed about the crown on your head. The things that you know, that you don't know, that they know. There are a lot of things you don't know about your life that the enemies know. I shared with us here sometimes ago of a particular brother in our village. 1987, very precisely, I think it was December either 17 or 19, 1987. He was traveling down to the village, you know, for a funeral ceremony and then had an accident and died in the process. He died in the process. They killed him. And the witches, we have witches in our village. Just FYI. <laughs> yeah, they killed him. They killed the brother. It was after about three days or there about that they saw, you know, Israel remains somewhere in the bush. And then the witches came out you know, after a while, and they confessed. We killed them. I was there. I was there at that time. I was there when they were making the confession. I didn't read it in a book. I've seen witches. <laughs> I'm not talking about the ones that cover up. I'm talking about the, the witches that you know. <laughs> they confessed. They said they killed him. And they were asking, they were probing the witches. They said, why did you kill him? They said, we saw a star. We saw that it, it would amount to much and it was going to bring deliverance to the village and bring blessings and prosperity to the village. And uh, we don't want anybody to deliver this village from wretchedness and poverty. And that's why we decided to terminate his life. Ah, Every covenant of death hanging over your life because of your star. Today I cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. 
every coffin that they have crafted for you and they are saying that before you come out of your cocoon we will terminate your life I stand as a prophet of God today I speak to everyone crafting coffin over your life fall down and die in the name of the Lord Jesus some people fall and say why do you have to say fall down and die huh? anyone that will not allow me to go must go for me Anyone means anyone. Listen, in warfare, nobody is spared. In warfare, everybody is a suspect. If you move too close to me, smile too much, you become a suspect. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The enemies, they knew about the star of Jesus. They knew about the star of Moses. They knew about the destiny, about the star of Joseph. I tell you, nobody can cover the glory of the sun. Your glory will not be covered. I say your glory will not be covered. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. The Lord has sent me to somebody here. Arise, shine, for your light has finally come. I, I don't know how long you have been waiting for this season. You are entering into a season of wonders. You are entering into a season of amazement. I call out the king in you. Arise. Shine. For your light has come. The glory of God is risen upon you. In the name of Jesus. You don't know when your angel is passing. Believe in God, you will be established. But when you believe his prophet, you are going to prosper. That is the word of God. If you believe what you are hearing, your star will come out of his cocoon. In the name of the Lord Jesus. A new season. I keep hearing a new season, a new season, a new season, a new season. I don't know who this person is. I call your season out right now. I call your season out right now. I call your season out right now. A new season, 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 a new season. I command right now. We bring the angel for the night. But joy come in the morning. Let your season come out. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God told Samuel, go to the house of Jesus. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 1. <laughs> First Samuel 16 verse 1, I read a part B of it. Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. The anointing of sought out to rest upon you now. So when you get there, you will see many of his children. But in the midst of the many, there is one. There is one. The anointing of sought out I release upon you the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Some of us who came through visa lottery, I came through visa lottery. My father wasn't an American. Perhaps you are aware of that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't born here at all. Perhaps you are aware of that. And I happened to the first generation in my family lineage that ever come to this country called America. I'm a peace -setter. Praise the Lord. At least that will go down the history. <laughs> it says, for I have provided me a king among his sons. The favor that will bring you out. The favor that will just separate you from others. That is what I'm provoking upon somebody here today. Receive it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So as we read in that scripture, David was a sought out. There's something called sort out. They will just distinguish you among many people. Just bring you out among the crowd. Even though David was still in the field as a little shepherd, God had prepared him as a king. 
So sometimes we are beclouded by the circumstances and the, sur- and the challenges surrounding our, our lives. The types of jobs that we do, the license that we have, if we have any at all. The lonely life we live, nobody seems to care. We seem to become, you know, a thing forgotten. And what happens is the enemies actually use this as a veil to cover our face. So, well, for as long as he cannot understand who he is, for as long as he's devoid of his identity, he will continue to tread a facsimile life. Today, every veil that covers your face that will not allow you to see what God has put in the inside of you, I remove in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. There is a king in you that you must discover. And it does not matter your limiting factors. The favor of God will seek you out in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Two points more that I would like to drop today before I close the message. Number one, God has not forgotten you. You may want to write that down. That's very, very important. God has not forgotten you. How I wish somebody here would just get that message right. God has not forgotten you. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15. Isaiah 49 15. Can a mother forget the infant at her breast? Walk away from the baby she bore? But even mothers forget sometimes. We have seen mothers who have trashed their kids in the garbage can. I read, I read the story of a boy, a boy in Uganda who was, who was uh, adopted by monkeys. I don't know if you guys read the story. It's a true story. It's not a, I'm not kidding. The mother deserted him in the face of battle. I don't know what happened. And then left him for the dead. Then the monkeys saw him and they raised him up. Go and search it out. It's, it's a true story. It's there. <laughs> if it's only, you're not reading, it's there. They raised him up. So eventually, you know, after, you know, I don't know, after, after many years, maybe 11 years or 15 years or something like that, you know, uh, uh, some of these uh, soldiers that were there, they, they discovered him and they rescued him from the monkeys. The mother forsook the child. And that's what the scripture is saying here. That there may be situations and circumstances that the mothers can forget the child of their, suck, their suckling child. But said, I will never forget you. Never. God can never forget you. Please listen. This is very, very important. Because the God that we serve is not a liar. God does not lie. I've told us here over and over. God does not speak to impress no man. God doesn't speak. To what, what? How do you want to impress God? What do you want to do to impress him? You can't impress God. Praise the Lord. And he does not need to do anything to impress you. I'm not making sense to anybody. And so when God sees it, speaks here, it's valid. He says, he's telling you, I'm not going to forget you. I know you are going through trying times. I am not going to forget you. So get over it. Don't ever let it come to your mind that God has forgotten you. He says, I will never forget you. I will never. And thank God the God that is saying this is an omnipresent God. Omnipresent God. As he's here with us, he's he, there with them in Asia. He's there in Europe. He's there in South America. He's there in Africa. He's all over the place. He's with you. He's with you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See how close the shadow of a man is to him. That's how close you are to God. Am I making sense to anybody here? Says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Your Samuel is on the way. With the oil of grace. Your Samuel is on the way. With the oil of anointing. Your Samuel is on the way. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Isaiah 40 27. Why say thou, O Jacob, and speaks, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Don't conclude the story of your life. Don't say your way is hidden from God, it's not. You may be asking, you know, like David, in the darkest hour of his time, in Psalm 22, verse 1, he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I believe that this was the time that the, that, the, that the lion came and was about to devour him. And he looked at himself. He had no where wither to confront and to overcome the lion. And he cried out unto God, My God, my God, why are thou forsaken me? And heaven showed up on his behalf. 
He says, Why art thou so far from helping me and from the walls of my roaring? Your desert experience, brothers and sisters, can never prevent your throne. It only prepares you for it. I say your wilderness experience can never prevent your throne. It only prepares you for it. Because God can never forget you. Lastly, as I round up, God has a plan. I say God has a plan. Tell your neighbor, God, God has a plan. And I just want to use the case of Saul. Just paint the picture for us as I round up, you know, uh, this afternoon. We remember the story of Saul and Kish is a dad. God caused the donkey of Kish to miss his way. It was a deliberate attempt by the almighty God to cause that donkey to get lost. It was God's plan from the onset. And God impressed in the heart of Kish to send Saul to look for it. Saul was not the only child of Kish. There are some other children. It was a deliberate attempt by the almighty God because God has a plan to cause Kish to call Saul. And say, Saul, among all my children, you will be the one I will send out to go and look for my donkey. Not that alone. God impressed in the heart of Saul to look for the servant amongst his, the servants in the house who seemed to be spiritual to follow him as they look for uh, the uh, donkey that was lost. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 3. And the asses of Kish Saul's father were lost and Kish said to Saul his son, take now one of the servants with thee and arise, go seek the asses. If you read verse uh, Verse, uh, chapter 9 verses 5 to 6 and when they were come to the land of Zuth Saul said to his servant that was with him come and let us return lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us and he said unto him behold now there is in this city a man of God and he is an honorable man all that he said comes surely to pass now let us go thither peradventure he can show us a way that we should go now it was remember it was that servant that counseled Saul that there is a prophet in the land, there is a seer in the land who can actually help us solve this particular problem. It was a deliberate attempt by the Almighty God. It was part of the program of God. It was not coincidental that God caused that servant to follow Saul. And it was God's attempt also and plan to cause Saul to be able to listen to a servant. Not that alone. God informed Samuel of the time a man called Saul will come unto him. As a matter of fact, a day before Saul arrived in that city, God spoke to Samuel. Somebody will be coming the next day. And that is going to be the next king of Israel. Remember what happened? That boy was looking for that uh, donkey. Is that not so? So he told Samuel the purpose of which that person, he was ordering the steps of Saul into his house. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 15 and 17, see what happened here. Now, 1 Samuel 9, 15 to 17. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before. Is anybody getting what I'm saying now? You know, we read scripture sometimes, we don't, we don't, we don't really grasp the mystery of it. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. A day before, a day before, God had told Samuel, Saul will be coming to you the next day. Is anybody getting that story there? It's, it was God's plan to order the steps of Saul to where Samuel was. Even though Saul had no clue, had no understanding of the of the intent of God for him going to the presence of Samuel, but God had a plan. Many of us, we find ourselves where we find ourselves. We do the things that we do. We meet with people. God has reasons why he brings people away. He has reasons why sometimes we walk into some situations and into some circumstances. God told Samuel, a day before, 24 hours, somebody will come. So Saul had no option than to go to where God had ordained. I'm not speaking to somebody here. He had no option. Even if he had wanted to go to somewhere else, he God will reorder his sense to go to where he has ordained him to go to. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody here. So now the Lord had told somewhere in his ear a day before, verse 15, saying, tomorrow about this time, I will send. I like that scriptures there. <laughs> wherever, your, wherever your benefactors are, God will order their steps to you. 
you he said i will send but if you look at it from a logical and rational and physical point of view was that the reason saul was going to samuel that was not the reason did saul have a clue about why he was going to samuel no so there was a scenario that, that was being painted physically there was another scenario being painted spiritually that is why he said my ways are not your ways neither are my thoughts your thoughts two different scenarios being painted the reason Saul was going to somewhere was completely different the reason you came to kingdom embassy church was completely different and God says well let him come here I will deliver a word that will bring a dramatic transformation into his life that his life will never remain the same again let him come i have a word for him that will change the course of his destiny i have a word for him that will change the course of his life just let him come i will order his steps somebody was saying the other time they were going to another church there was an argument oh do we go here do we not go here and and one way god ordered your steps here the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the lord but most of the time we do not understand such steps when they are being played out physically, we see a completely different picture than what is in operation in the realm of the spirit. And that is where we are left confused. That is where we worry. That is where we are filled with fear. That is why we are overwhelmed because we cannot see what God is seeing. Ah, may God open your eyes today in the mighty name of Jesus. Saul did not see what God was saying, but God told Samuel, don't mind that boy he will find his way to your presence he will come i tell i in fact he said i am the one sending him the father was the one that sent him physically god was the one that was sending him spiritually praise the lord he said yeah i will send thee a man out of the land of benjamin and thou shall anoint him to be the captain over my people israel that he may save my people out of the hand of the philistines for i have looked upon my people because of their christ come upon me and unto me and when samuel saw saw verse 17 the lord said unto him behold the man 